Before doing anything else, open the MATLAB subfolder by double-clicking. This is a good place to save your work. You can navigate the folder tree by using the buttons at the top of the container, or by selecting parts of the file path. The command window is where you can enter statements such as calculations and get results. Let's try it now by entering a simple calculation 2 plus 2. To execute the statement, we press enter on the computer keyboard. Once statements have been executed, they cannot be edited. The mathematical constant pi is entered like so. The value is displayed with five digits on the screen, but the result is stored with greater precision in computer memory. You can type format long to change the display setting. This will affect the way results are shown from all of your calculations. To change back to the default, type format short. What result do you think will be given by the expression shown? Pause the video now and try to work it out before we check it in MATLAB. So this is the expression that we need to calculate. Anything in brackets is calculated first. Followed by any exponents. Next is multiplication and division, which are given equal precedence. The calculation proceeds from left to right. Finally, addition and subtraction are performed. These also have equal precedence. It is important that you understand the order that the operations are interpreted. If you are in doubt, you can use brackets to group operations. However, Using too many brackets can make your work difficult to read. The workspace shows a list of objects or variables that we have created. At the moment it looks quite empty, because we only have ANS, which is the previous result that we calculated. ANS is short for answer. Type ANS and you will get the result 42 again. Every time that we execute a statement in the command window, the result for ANS is overwritten. If we want to save results so that we can use them in other calculations, then we need to give them variable names. For example, I will put x equals pi by 4 and y equals minus pi by 3. Notice that the semicolons stop the results being displayed on the screen, but they are still evaluated. Now that these variables are defined in the workspace, I can use them in subsequent calculations, such as sine x plus cos y. Although I can use the result ANS as a variable in calculations, for instance by typing 2 times ANS, it is always better to define a variable instead. With any statements that we enter, the order matters. For instance, when we created the variable x, we typed x equals pi by 4. What appears on the left of the equals sign is the variable name, and what appears on the right is the value that we'd like to assign to this variable name. If we try typing pi by 4 equals x, then we'll get an error. The expression to the left of the equals sign is not a valid target for the assignment. What happened here is that MATLAB tried to create a variable with the name pi by 4, which is not allowed. We'll encounter the same error if we type pi by 4 equals pi by 4. The symbol equals in MATLAB is called the assignment operator. It assigns a value, which is given by the thing on the right, to a variable name, which is given on the left. The value does not have to be numeric. It can be a word. For example, let's try typing z equals hello. We have another error, undefined function or variable hello. MATLAB tried to evaluate the expression on the right, 
treating the object hello as a variable. There is no variable in the workspace with this name, so the evaluation failed. What we need to do is create an object with the string property, so that MATLAB knows that it is a word and not a variable. This is done by enclosing hello in apostrophes, like this. It worked. Incidentally, we could define hello equals 1. Then, z equals hello gives the result z equals 1. All of the expressions that we have entered are shown in the command history. You can double-click on statements to re-enter them. Or, you can copy statements from the command history to paste into other documents. Also, you can press the up and down arrow keys on your keyboard to navigate through the command history. If you know what the statement you're looking for starts with, you can type the beginning of it in the command window, and then use the up arrow key to jump straight to it. We can clear everything in the command window by typing CLC. Notice that this does not affect the command history or the variable workspace. The workspace now contains a lot of variables that we've created. When a variable is no longer required, it is a good idea to clear it from memory, and you can do this by right-clicking the variable in the workspace and choosing Delete. Alternatively, to clear the variable named hello, we can type clear hello. To get rid of everything in the workspace, we can just type clear 